This is the best consumer graphics card you can buy today, and it is obscenely large. Everyone jokes we'll be plugging our computers into our graphics cards someday. Well, today is that day. I present the computer you mount to your graphics card. But what is this thing, and how does it work? Does it even work? I'll get to that. Over the past two years, I've been on a mission. A stupid mission, but a mission nonetheless. That mission? Get a graphics card working on a Raspberry Pi. But I was doing things all wrong. I was trying to get a graphics card working on a Pi. When I saw the 4090, this massive thing, I realized I should try getting a Pi working on a graphics card. I call this 4090 the Widowmaker. That's because my wife is gonna kill me after she finds out how much I paid to make this video. This thing tips the scales at over four pounds. That's about two kilograms for all my non-American friends. I also had to buy a new power supply. This one puts out 1200 watts. But how can I plug my Pi into the graphics card? Enter the Compute Module 4. This thing is called a System on Module, and using it, along with tons of help from Marek in Poland, we came up with this. This is a PCI Express card called the Pi 4 GPU, or PIG for short. And normally, you'd plug this thing into a computer's motherboard. Except, we didn't do that. We pulled a 180 and made it so it plugs into a graphics card. And how did we make this thing? We used JLC PCB, the sponsor of today's video. JLC PCB offers a ton of services, from $2 for 1 to 8 layer PCBs, full assembly as low as 8 bucks, or even high quality 3D printing. They even offer flex PCB service now, and ordering online is easy. Marek used JLC PCB to make this board, and thousands of makers around the world use them every month. If you want to build high quality PCBs fast, JLC PCB can offer 24 hour turnaround times and they have close partnerships with shipping companies like DHL and FedEx. Build your next PCB today using the link in the description. So let's fire this thing up. All right, so far nothing exploded, but there's no video output. Well, that's where things get interesting, or boring if you don't care about the engineering and just wanted to see this thing play Crisis. But basically, the Raspberry Pi was never made for this kind of use. In fact, only the newest model, which is nearly five years old now, even has basic support for plugging in cards like this. I mean, it does see the card is attached. And I can even install NVIDIA's graphics card drivers. But when I try to run it, it just errors out. It even seems to have fun laying out the error message in the most annoying way possible. And I already hear AMD fanboys yelling, just try our Radeon, they're better for Linux anyway. Well, yes, I mean, the Raspberry Pi runs Linux, not Windows, and AMD has had a better track record there. So, I did it. I bought AMD's flagship card, the 7900 XTX, and I was testing it, but it actually does worse. I have to recompile the Linux kernel to get the driver to load, and when it does, the whole system crashes. It locks up, and you know it locks up because the fancy little cursor that sits there blinking its heart out stops blinking. That's when you know an OS is truly gone and dead. But that's not all. I also tested this card in my PC and found out it has a bad cooler. When I had my computer laying down on its side, I could get full power. But the card would throttle if I sat the computer upright. What a dumb feature. I emailed AMD and I also emailed Sapphire and they told me just to return the card. They wouldn't even RMA it. So I guess it's too bad AMD didn't spend time validating the 7000 series against Raspberry Pis. Just like they didn't spend enough time validating their coolers actually work. But at this point you might be wondering, will any graphics cards work? Well, yes, but we'll get to that later. Keep watching. But one thing nobody's asking is this. What about Intel? They're like the little engine that could. They make a graphics card, but right now not many people are buying it. This is an ARC A750, and it wouldn't be an Intel product if the sticker it came with didn't have its own license agreement. There. Perfect. Well, Intel's already fighting an uphill battle with Windows drivers, and they've been raked over the coals for that. Sadly, the Linux drivers aren't even compatible with the type of processor the Pi uses, so I couldn't even select it to compile. They're working on new drivers for Linux, and maybe I'll test it out again someday. For now, I'll give the A750 an A for effort. At least they're trying. And if you work for Intel and want to help me test these things on ARM, hit me up in the DMs. Now, I also have this absolutely insane graphics card with 48 gigs of VRAM, but before I test it, I want to talk a little more about the special computer Marek and I built. Well, 
mostly Marek. I'm like Steve Jobs here, and he's like Waz. I had an idea, and he basically built this hardware from scratch. That's like 100% the truth, and I'd be a liar if I said I did much more than that. I gave Marek this horrible drawing on a post-it note, then a little later, he came back with this. Well, it was a little more complicated than that, but basically, he gets all the credit for this PCB design. Then I said, we need a logo, and he had his friend Chrysia design this logo. Then I decided we needed a custom PCB bracket, and his friend Adam fabricated it. So yeah, the one thing that was left was a nice 3D printed enclosure, and I'd said I'd make that, but <laughs> this is what I came up with. So if you want to hire me, at least I'll deliver a post-it note sketch. But if you want great PCBs, artwork, and metalwork, well, go contact Mirkotronics, and they'll get you sorted. All right, now back to the testing. This is a Quadro RTX 8000, a high-end GPU meant for professional graphics work. I'm a professional, sometimes, and I try making graphics work, so it's obviously the right card for a Raspberry Pi. Its two main features, it has 48 gigabytes of VRAM, and this front cover is the absolute worst thing in the world to keep clean. This card uses NVIDIA's professional drivers, which are like the normal drivers, but a little better. And they're only guaranteed to work on certain special systems. The Raspberry Pi is not on that list, but we'll try anyway. It looks like the card doesn't work when I try loading the driver, but I noticed there's also a USB-C port on the back. Does that work? Ha! <laughs> What do you know? That thing actually does work. So if you want to add an extra USB port to your Raspberry Pi for, let's see, $3,000 used? Well, that's one way to do it. I forgot to mention that at idle, this card uses like 100 watts of power, so maybe just stick to a USB hub. Oh, also, thanks to Lambda for sending this card for testing. Now, at this point, some people would get discouraged. Not me. I think I have a problem. I tested an older RTX 3080 tie, and that didn't work either. A Radeon RX 6700 XT? Nope. How about that RTX A2000 I installed in my rack mount PC? Nada. So I tried some even older cards, like this GTX 750 tie, a GT710, a Radeon HD 7470, and... It, wait, what's that? I actually got this one working. All it took was months of Linux kernel hacking with a community of other people as crazy as I was, and we got video output. Well, not much of it, but at least it's something. If you want the whole story on how we got it working, check out the video I posted almost exactly a year ago. It should be linked right up there somewhere. But here's a really simple explanation, and it has to do with the way the Raspberry Pi and a lot of other single board computers store memory mappings. Let's say the storage wall is the Pi's memory, and the graphics card driver wants me to remember something. So it hands me this tiny fan, and I'm like, oh, that fan goes in my small OnlyFans box. But then later on, the driver's like, I want that fan again, I need to use it now. Then I reach down over here and grab this giraffe. Well, when the graphics card tries to use this giraffe as a fan, it basically explodes and crashes the system. These memory alignment bugs mean you have to patch drivers to work on the Pi. We even had to do that to make these storage cards work in the Petabyte Pi project. Go check out that video if you haven't already. So I got to thinking. A while back, Linus Tech Tips did a video on this wacky ASRock Rack M.2 graphics card. It only has 16 megs of VRAM, but hey, simpler is better, right? So here's that card, and can we get it to work? Yes, in fact, we can. It's not going to play any 3D games, and it makes for a really messy install, but it works. All we had to do was hack around the Linux kernel again, and thanks to Tobleminer's patch, we get text output over VGA. And besides 3D games, it also won't load any kind of window manager, so I guess I can put away my mouse for now. But Jeff, I hear you say, if all you can get is a console and some glitchy graphics after hundreds of hours of work, why are you still doing this? Well, I don't have a great answer for that. I mean, a lot of it is the whole, it can't be done, so I'm gonna try it anyway mentality that I have about life. But there are a few practical applications I use to justify this work. First, you can get an extra display output from a Raspberry Pi, and there are like seven people in the world who that would be really useful for. And second, a lot of people use single board computers, not just the Raspberry Pi, as little media servers, since they're so efficient. If you're running software like Jellyfin, and you have certain graphics cards, you could transcode media files in real time. That means you could store 4K videos on your hard drive, but play them back at lower resolutions to save bandwidth. Now, that's also not working on the Pi yet, but someday maybe it will. And weirdos like us who hack at drivers until they work 
pave the way for future hardware to work out of the box. Like this thing. <laughs> it's also got an ARM CPU, and will the 4090 work in it? Well, subscribe, and we'll find out together. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.